Greetings, I'm Craig DeRoche, the president of Family Policy Alliance, and with me is Marjorie Dannenfelser, who is the president of SBA Pro-Life America. SBA Pro-Life America is just one of the favorite organizations for uh, Family Policy Alliance, as well as our 40 states, and you're so welcoming to us. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> Thank you. You know, when you say, uh, when you mention that 40, I think uh, what pops immediately into my mind is that with the overturn of Roe versus Wade, it has gone from one front to 50 plus one fronts. And so for, um, for you to be where you are at this point, uh, with your leadership and all the leaders and all of those places, it means that we have such great hope to take advantage of the big wide open door that overturning Roe versus Wade has allowed us. And, and that's a perfect transition, Marjorie, because there's benchmarks. And one of them we weren't sure if we were going to see in our lifetime, right? Yeah, we wanted to overturn Roe versus Wade so we could, mm -hmm. at a policy level, um, protect life, yeah. you know, with policy that the Supreme Court was preventing. We hit that benchmark. Yeah. God was involved in that with the Dobbs decision. Mm -hmm. But now we're faced with the challenges of, like you said, 50 plus one. So what are some of the other benchmarks as the years progress here uh, um, that you expect to see that will help America move to one day uh, not having abortion anywhere? Yeah. So I started this when I was 27 at SBA list, it was called then. Now I am not 27. <laughs> and, uh, and with that huge moment that everyone said was impossible, no one, almost no one believed that it was real to think that we would overturn um, Roe versus Wade. But with God's grace, and a lot of work and good, some good strategy, uh, we all did this together. And so what's next? So the most urgent things, and, those, and I think those closest to now benchmarks have to do with passing laws, and they've happened in 21 states so far. Um, defeating ballot initiatives where the other side has decided they're gonna close us down in our own territory, places like Ohio, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Arizona, Florida, those places. They wanna shut us down, put little Roe versus, Ro versus Wade's in those state constitutions. But, and, and beyond that, is that wherever we are ambitious for life, so where our um, most valiant efforts stick, and we have protected every life in that state, we also have every mother in that state facing a moment in her life that she did not expect. And in so many ways, it is, um, it is a way to, to bring Christ to her, um, put, lay everything, every crisis at his feet, um, perhaps in many in many cases make solve problems that she never would have solved because she didn't just jump over them and have multiple abortions. So I think one of those benchmarks, the benchmarks are the law and the benchmarks are the service to moms. And that's what makes SBA pro-life so different from other people. A lot of groups just focus on the law, but we know that the mother is considering abortion as a solution because she has problems. Mm -hmm. And if we help solve the problems, is what you're saying, yeah. we'll get, it, it, and that is, um, that's really what this is about. We're leading with our heart, and we're portrayed mm -hmm. differently in the media sometimes, but the states, um, you know, my, my analysis of the states are we've, we, we've learned some things through failures, mm -hmm. you know, in, in two or three right. states, and we're retooling. Mm -hmm. In other states, things have gone better than expected, like Oklahoma. Yeah you know, in other places. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what does the activity in the states look like over the next couple of years? Well, it's intense. Right away, the other side pointed to nine states that they want to put little Roe versus Wade's in all the state constitutions. They begin with Ohio, then they move to Arizona, Florida, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Idaho, and beyond, because those that's our territory. I mean, and they see this as the pitch battle. They are completely emboldened, and they've got the wind um, of anger under their wings. So I think that the, the, what, where we're already working with, um, especially in all those states, family policy councils, beginning with Ohio, is that you guys are, the, are um, most often the lead on the ground that is uh, championing with us on the national level to bring together coalitions and resources and er early money and early communications, unified movements in each of these states and unified messages in each of these states. I think we learned a lot from 
going from a, a, a beautiful ragtag um, organic movement to now me needing to be the sophisticated um, modern movement that brings together coalition and unity with resources uh, that communicates early on and is on offense, 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 offense. Every single time they try to obliterate our pro-life laws and and um, and and Scott's abortion into those constitutions. The other thing they're doing, of course, is going after our pregnancy centers across the country. They're basically trying to put them out of business on the on the legal level and go after them in terms of violence uh, and in terms of just undermining confidence that this is a worthy project. It is the best project that we could possibly have as saving human beings and serving women. Amen to that. And SBA Pro-Life America, um, for our audience, this is how we think of them. They're, they're a leader in pro-life pro policies, and Marjorie has been for a very long time, and we can't advance in the states without having that narrow subject matter expertise as well as that professionalism that you brought to the movement. Um, SBA Pro-Life America has grown exponentially under your leadership, and I know that governors and the state legislators count on you for that advice and that counsel and that leadership, but it doesn't stop there. Yeah, you know, because right. they, they, you work closely with President Trump. You are a big part of, of why we have the Supreme Court justices we have. That's one piece of the pie. I know pretty much every member of Congress, even whether they support or oppose life, knows of SBA pro-life, mm -hmm. and they're listening to you. Um, what, what should we be doing? What about the benchmarks at the federal level for our audience? What, what should we be looking for there? Well, I'm sure you know, given your, um, your past as being the Speaker of the House in Michigan and being very savvy in politics yourself, that nobody really listens to your opinion unless you have an ability to follow up on what you what the advice you've given. Amen. And so that is where our power is. Our power is in the opinion of pro-life people, especially in battleground states that are willing to take action. That is why on the federal level, when we're talking to every presidential candidate, which I am now, and uh, and we bring along and and we convene with all of our friends uh, across the across the country that care about this to meet with and have conversations with each presidential candidate on the Republican side that says they're pro-life, they must be for a federal role. They must understand that there is a, they will have a responsibility if they are in the Oval Office to advocate and, and lead on, a, on many things, but at a minimum, a federal minimum standard. They must be for what consensus can be built um, in America that puts us in, uh, in, in alignment with the rest of the civilized world, which we call Europe, a lot of them, <laughs> where, where is it we draw the line as a nation? We think it should be a conception, but where is it, in consensus-wise, that each presidential candidate is going to lead? If they can't come up with that, even if they don't name the month, but if they say, I have a responsibility to lead right now at a moment that, that we've just overturned Roe versus Wade, which is a revolution in our country. I must lead on the federal level. They are, they cannot be a presidential candidate. And on the flip side, there are many strong ones that really do want to lead. They see the moment and they're ready to lead. And it's an exciting, exciting moment to see that. And, and I especially admire your passion in your leadership here. Um, Marjorie, SBA Pro-Life America has made that very clear to presidential candidates, and I'm pretty sure you're making that clear to Senate candidates yes. and other people as well, that mm -hmm. um, you, you can't skip out on this, because it, to me, it, it would be like saying, um, well, Michigan doesn't allow free speech, you know, and, and that's okay. Uh, um, that's a state issue, mm -hmm. you know, or we're talking about a fundamental constitutional right to life, something our country was created to preserve. It may or may not be in our Constitution as it's currently written. Mm -hmm. um, it may or may not be in some statutes as we're examining, uh, um, but it is clear that our federal law was created to protect our civil rights. That's right. As a conservative, that's what I want our conservatives to remember. Mm -hmm. When you hear your friends saying, hands off this or that or that libertarian mm -hmm. view, there is a life involved here yeah. and they have the yeah. same rights as any other human being. And, and uh, we just need to keep pushing, but we yeah. know that it's smaller and it's incremental and, and we need 
to start somewhere. And I, I just really appreciate your leadership there. Um, your organization, some of these groups got started further back, toward all the way back at Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm, that's right. SBA Pro Life America, mm -hmm. as you kind of pointed out, came in later in yeah. your origin story, but at a higher, more sophisticated, at a political and a policy level, and you've professionalized it and you've grown like a weed. <laughs> so tell us how you do that. What what is SBA Pro Life America? And to our audience out there listening mm -hmm. to this, You've got to check out this wonderful organization, and, and, and if you're not supporting them already, please consider it, because this is who we work with. This is who, our, we work on multi, many issues at, at Family Policy Alliance, and we count on SBA Pro-Life America. So as it, tell them about the organization and how, how you do all this. Well, thank you. I mean, we're, we're, I believe we're two wings of the dove. We, we work complementing each other in the work that we do, and we always have. Um, and no more time than now have we needed the digging in on the state level with true leadership to make sure that we are passing laws that save lives and that we're serving women at the same time. So we, you know, to be, uh, to be real, when we started, I mean, it was at my living room table and we had about $5,000. Like, that's, that's with an idea that you have to have, like every other human rights battle, or just any other lobby, you have to have a strong muscle in order to pass. If you, if you think it's the human rights movement of our time, you've got to have a law to, that, that enshrines that, that reflects the founding documents that says we have a right to life. And you've got to start, um, you basically have to do what you, what you do in politics. You, you reward your friends and you make sure that you're, the people that have, that have voted against life don't get into public office again. And that's how we overturn Roe versus Wade. We laid down stipulations for each presidential candidate that they had to move up, that they had to live up to. And so many of them willingly did so. President Trump did the same, not only willingly, but even more than we even asked, mm -hmm. and did, uh, I think, uh, outpace expectations so that we had, pres uh, we had um, Supreme Court justices that would hear the perfect case to overturn Roe versus Wade. Um, what we have to do now, in my opinion, is make sure that we leverage every strength that we built in the last 10 years in terms of politics to make sure that we win every ballot initiative. Because every time we save, we save a ballot initiative, every time we defeat the other side's attempt to put Roe versus Wade in state constitutions, we save tens of thousands of children's lives. It is not theoretical anymore. And so we're about that, and we're about winning the next presidential race and, may, and um, basically certifying for the pro-life movement and all of us who believe that they would be, each one of those Republican primary candidates will be an advocate for life, and they must be at a time where many are shrinking back and a little bit afraid, putting their head in the sand. This is not a moment for that. Well, if you're at home and you're listening to this or at work, and you heard what Marjorie Dannenbelzer, the president of SBA Pro-Life, just said. Um, and you wonder, you're frustrated like me. Sometimes we help people get elected and they turn and they run the other way once, once they're in office. People holding them to account in SBA Pro-Life America, helping get the right candidates in the first place, helping them lead and helping hold them accountable. It's just a, a joy and a privilege to work with you.